it's Marilee from The Social Team, and today is a super exciting day because I get to step away from my desk and my computer and step into a territory where I don't normally go into, and that's our labs. So today we're going to hang out with our chemist Ramya, and she's going to show us how she created our new Squalane Plus Zinc Shear Mineral Sunscreen. So to be candid, I'm a little bit nervous because the last time I was in a lab was like, middle school chemistry and I found out really quickly that I shouldn't be in a lab. So let's go find out and see what's in there. Hopefully I don't mess anything up. All right, so follow me. Let's go into the lab. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. I heard yeah. you're looking for me. I'm looking for you. All right. Cool. I'm, I'm all suited, ready to go. We looking good? Okay. Welcome to our lab. Oh my God, this is so different than the computers and offices upstairs. This is really exciting. <laughs> so I obviously know what you do here, but for the viewers out there or anyone who's new to our brand who may not know exactly what you do, can you tell us what you do here at Biosance? Sure. I work in the product development team and I formulate our products. Amazing. The genius behind it all, AKA. It's a team effort. So I know we're actually in the lab so that you can show us how you created our sheer mineral sunscreen. And honestly, I've tried it already and it's super blendable, super moisturizing. And you know, it just absorbs so quickly. So really what I'm here for is to get a behind the scenes look on how you even created this, what products are in here that make this so unique, so blendable um, and different from all the other sunscreens out there. Well, you're in luck because I happen to be making a batch right now. So why don't we get started? Yes. I'm going to get started by weighing out our key materials. You can't just stir zinc oxide into a cream. It doesn't work. It doesn't sit that way. Okay. Um, there are certain ratios and ingredients we need to make sure everything stays together um, and works as a cream and there's different components. So I'm going to start weighing the ingredients. Well, first question, do you feel like when you're in the lab, you're like kind of in the kitchen, like a chef? just creating stuff, because this is kind of what I feel right now. Absolutely. What are you putting in right now? This is glycerin, so it helps with some of the moisturization. Mm -hmm. So I see there's like a white powder substance here. Can you tell me what that is exactly? Because it's the one that stands out the most I can see here. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at is zinc oxide, which mm -hmm. is a physical sun filter. There's physical uh -huh. sunscreen and there's chemical sunscreen. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. And ours is physical, physical uh -huh. because of the zinc. Right. Look at me learning. I hope y'all are taking notes too. <laughs> okay. So why did you decide to use zinc oxide? So we really like physical sun filters, zinc oxide in particular, because it's uh, suitable for all skin types. Mm -hmm. One of the things we really wanted to achieve in this formula is something that blends into skin. So we spent most of our time doing that. So it is a physical sunscreen, but it mm -hmm. doesn't really feel like one so much. And it's something that you enjoy using. Yeah. You know how sometimes when you go to the beach and um, you put on sunscreen and you look blue? Yeah, no, I mean, I put on sunscreen or on my face on the beach and I'm white. Mm -hmm. Or like on TV shows when they do those lifeguards and they always have that white patch on their nose. Mm -hmm. Is that what our sunscreen's gonna like? No, look it, like? it will blend into skin easily because of the way it's been formulated. And that's something we really mm -hmm. wanted to be able to focus on. Right. Thanks, Zinc. Like it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. How do you come up with these ingredients? Um, so one of the things I start by doing is looking at the ingredients we can't use. It's kind of like a fun puzzle to put together because when you have certain limitations, it can actually be a good thing. Biosounds has something like 2000 ingredients that we're not allowed to use. Yep. Um, we which, do. Did y'all know that? We mm -hmm. blacklist over 2000 ingredients. So she has to work with what she got. <laughs> um, seemed pretty challenging at first, but yeah. it, it gives us opportunities to be creative with what we can use. Um, and we actually have a lot of good options. And we happen to make an ingredient called squalane, which does most of the work for me. So interestingly, squalane is used in a lot of cosmetics, uh, luxury skincare products. Yeah. And it was previously harvested from shark liver. And our team found a way to make it using sugar cane. So there were no sharks harmed in the process. Mm -hmm. And playing with that and getting the zinc oxide to go into that helps it disappear into skin. So to be honest, I actually didn't used to put on sunscreen every day because I'm not as fair skin and I don't feel like I get as easily sunburnt as other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just felt like I didn't need to. And when I would try, I would always have this white cast. So I'm like, well, no, I'm, I don't need sunscreen. <laughs> I mean, is that true though? Like, 
should I be protecting myself more? <laughs> you should. It's interesting you bring that up because a lot of people think they don't need to wear sunscreen, but to be honest, everybody should be wearing it. It's not just about getting burned. No matter your skin tone? No matter your skin tone. Okay. But even You're just right. the light around you, visible light, a lot of that does um, a little bit of damage and just you want to keep protecting yourself. So that's yeah. something that's really important. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Moving back to creating this product then. Mm -hmm. Thanks for answering that question. Yeah, of course. So what else is in this? Um, we also use a water lily extract. Um, water lily. That's my middle name, lily. Really? Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> we use this because it has this really nice calming effect. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, when you go out in the sun, it's not just the sun damage you get, but you also get a little bit of heat stress too. So by kind of calming skin down, it just makes for a better feel overall. And it produces this really nice, fresh texture. All right, so let me just break this down. We have zinc oxide. It's doing all the heavy work, protecting us. Lily, water lily. Mm -hmm. And that cools and calms. Mm -hmm. And then what else? Uh, you forgot about the squalane. Oh, I'm learning so much. This is like hard to like mm -hmm. keep in track. But while I'm looking at our packaging, mm -hmm. um, I know that all sunscreens always have an SPF number. What does that even mean? I've always wondered. So the SPF number refers to the level of protection against UVB rays. And that number is uh, calculated kind of by how much redness is produced upon um, UVB exposure. And it's calculated to give that level of protection. I can also see that this says broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. What does that really mean? So you want a sunscreen that's broad spectrum to protect against UVB and UVA rays. I think a good way to remember it is think of UVB as burning, UVA as aging. Ooh, burning and aging. Because yes. at the end of the day, you don't just think about the burning. That's not actually what it stands for. Right, but, but it helps. It helps you remember, right? And I right? need all the help I can get, yes. Mm -hmm. And last question that I have kind of just looking at our packaging. Mm -hmm. There's a thing saying PA++++. Now, I don't know what that means. So that refers to another level of UVA protection. It's something that's not really recognized in the United States, but it's pretty popular in other countries, um, certain parts of Asia. And it's a different type of, well, UVA protection and it measures against um, skin tanning actually, which is sort of a form of skin aging to a certain extent. So the triple plus means very good protection. So how often should I be reapplying? For any sunscreen, you need to be reapplying every two hours. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. So I finished weighing my ingredients. Okay. I'm going to blend these together and I will show you the final product. Yay, exciting. All right, I have just finished blending the product. So cool. Do you want to give that a try? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <gasps> it feels just like the the finished one in the package. So blendable, super moisturizing. Look, it's literally disappearing. Like, let me show you up close, but look at that. It's literally invisible and I'm protected. That's super cool. I wasn't really much of a sunscreen wearer growing up either because it was really hard to find something that was enjoyable to use. Right, um, yeah. So this formula took years to make. I've always been trying to figure out the right way to make a sunscreen that didn't feel like a sunscreen so much. And I think we really nailed it with this one. So I hope all of you at home enjoy it too. So where would I layer this into my skincare routine? So you want to use it as the last step in your skincare routine mm -hmm. before your makeup, if you choose to wear makeup. So last for example, step. if you have a serum, you want to use that first, then you use your moisturizer um, if you want, mm -hmm. and then you put this on top. Awesome. So serum and then moisturizer. Optional. Maybe oil, optional also. Mm -hmm. And then sunscreen to protect your delicate skin from the sun. Well, thank you so much, Ramya. It was so fun seeing um, your work setting, a lot different from just my desk and on my phone. So, I mean, maybe next time you can shadow me and you can answer and do our social. <laughs> thank you, Marilee, for being here. Yes, thanks so much. <laughs> So if y'all want to check this out, um, it'll be available on biosance.com and Sephora. So we'll leave the link below so you can check it out. Yeah.